Welcome to the Business Spotlight interview series, and I'm your host, Harneet, uh, and I have a special guest today, Simon Johnson, the MD of 3RoomsDesign.com, and they specialize in the manufacturing and the interior design, both domestic and commercial uh, side of things, based out of, uh, based in Nottingham. Yeah. Welcome, Simon. It's so good to have you today. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, you and I have been discussing before the interview about your journey, but would really want uh, to understand and if you could share your business journey from where all of this started, you know, how has been the business? Yeah, um, first, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, I'll keep it brief. Um, so my journey started from sort of tripped into it. Um, I left school wanting to be in the British Army. Uh, it was something I was quite passionate about, and uh, a few people in my family had been in the army as well with my grandfather. So uh, that sort of I went in there, didn't work out, and I came out of the British Army thinking, "What am I going to do? do you know what I mean, I, I need a trade, I need something." And uh, I went in to start training to be a carpenter, uh, joiner, and um, sort of did that trade, worked for a few people, and slowly worked my way up in the office side of things, estimating and things like that. And then I noticed in the trade there was a, there was a bit of a, in, during that time, I was during the first recession, um, a lot of companies were closing. And uh, I sort of looked and thought, I could probably do this myself. And mm -hmm. um, the last company I worked for, they closed and I had just brought a huge contract to them from a company, obviously Tesco. And uh, they mm -hmm. called me going, Simon, you brought all this work here. Mm -hmm what we're going to do and uh, I, I just panicked and went I, I'll, I'll do it and that was where it all started and there was a mad rush for a year of trying to set something a factory or a small workshop and mm -hmm. sort of started um, and that was nearly 12 years ago and um, from there we've sort of just reinvested and grew and grew. That's that's quite a story. Twelve years ago, from army to carpenter, and then uh, three rooms design. Wow. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, it's a bit of a path, right? Well, whatever. It's twelve years from when we started the business, so the, the old journey is yeah, about twenty years. But <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, so Simon, what has been your biggest learnings as an employee? You know, from employee now, you've been into the business for a long period yeah. of time. Yeah, um, I, I think employing people in general has uh, is, is, is been a huge learning curve um i think everyone knows the the sort of unwritten rule of employing family and friends um mm -hmm. it's sort of it can really work or it can really not work um so i learned that very very early um and then looking i'm still friends with everybody that uh, in the family but uh, yeah we learned that very early i think one thing i would change now would be not worrying too much about what you're paying somebody knowing mm -hmm. their worth um i think my big concern back then was trying to keep the cost down as you do as yeah. a new business owner uh keep the cost down as much as you can try and make as much profit as you can you you, you sort of yeah. focus purely on the profits um whereas if i had my time again i would probably more invest in people's skill sets um mm. and also trust trust was a big issue for me when i started my business i was a bit of a control freak as a lot of new business owners are um and you sort of go no 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 I, I, sorry i'll do it i'll do it the, yeah. the time I, there was a pivotal point when i employed my first manager uh, a gentleman mm -hmm. called gary and i was so nervous about it and i employed him and that was going to be the time where i would take a step away from the tools and now yeah. become more office based mm -hmm. and uh, i did that and without making that step <laughs> The, the business probably wouldn't be where it was today um that really opened our business up and then i realized very quickly the more you invest in people uh the more you your business can grow i'm glad you said that simon i could i could feel you know you moving from a business owner to a leadership sort of a yeah. thing where yeah. you start you know because when i speak to business owners and if you're really just focused on cutting the cost guess what will happen you will end up cutting the cost yeah yeah, exactly. But if the focus is to grow, invest in people, then you end up growing. Yeah, yeah, no, I, 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 I couldn't agree with that more. Yeah, and I think we have we have a we have you in front of us to prove to that analogy to make that a reality because you have grown so much when you, you know, you ch changed your thought process and your uh, identity yeah. as a business owner. I, I think it's one of those where. Don't be afraid to fail. Uh, that is probably the best thing I can, the best advice I can give to anybody. 
we if I, if I had listed all the mistakes that I've made so far as a business owner, they're huge, but you can't learn from anything unless you make that mistake. Because if if you look at a perfect picture, which sometimes social media paints in, in this day and age, um, you'll think it's easy. And I, believe me, it's not. I mean, it isn't easy. And that's one thing as a business owner, you learn very quickly. If it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Um, mm. And you sort of do have to live a life that nobody else will or want to do. Do you know what I mean? So you can have a life like no one else can. Do you know what I mean? Uh, or within reason. Um, but yeah, it's, it's we sort of very quickly, we grew and grew and grew naturally as businesses um, do if you're putting the hard work in. And we got to a stage where we we was thinking, right, okay, we're at the top of our game now. And obviously then the big heavy COVID hit. Um, we were very fortunate. We did a lot of work through COVID. Uh, we, we did a lot of work manufacturing for hospitals. Um, but going back to don't be afraid to fail, we, we took a risk. We made a big gamble with a company that we've been working for for a long, long time, paid us on time every time. We took a big gamble and took a contract that was way bigger than we'd ever done before. And uh, I think it was worth about £2.8 million. It was huge. And it allowed us, there was no other work around at the time during COVID, and it allowed us to work. And uh, I think we was probably two thirds of the way into it. And we got a letter out of nowhere come through the door after the first month's payment from this company was delayed. And they had gone into administration. Oh. And eventually when we totted up the total bill, they closed on us owing us 1.4 million pounds. Wow, half and of it, the contract. Half of the, just over half the contract. And there was no way out of it. You, you couldn't work out of that much debt. We, we'd never paid anybody, um, mis mispaid anybody. Everybody was up to date. The only debts that we owed was based on this contract. And we was looking down the barrel of gun, of going, right, there's no way out. And that was a very, sharp learning curve of trust and understanding the business and not taking too much on but then you, there's a totally different picture if that would have worked you would have been looking back and going how successful this has been so it's taking those risks but understanding what could go wrong and, and it did go wrong fortunately we we um we had another company that we was uh, we'd set up so with that was three rooms bespoke joinery we had already traded for two years as three rooms design with our interior design business that was trying to grow and we paid our corporation tax for a reason it, it's it, it allowed us to go right okay it's not our fault someone's pulled the carpet from under our feet we spoke to all of our suppliers all of our people and they was like look we'll support you if you want to go again and we start again. We're now nearly two years into relaunching the business. We're back to the same turnover that we was before um, with half the amount of staff. And I'll probably mention later how we'll get into it, how we got to that. Wow. So, I mean, in hindsight, if we look back to that episode, the entire COVID episode, Simon, was that, I mean, I wouldn't say a blessing, but they had, th did that give you a lesson? which is oh, yeah. probably much more I'd probably say we went when we talk about roller coasters covid was weirdly the biggest blessing the most darkest period as a business owner i've ever had and also the best time um so we, we had at the start we was like great okay i think it was 23rd of march we just landed another big contract like our first biggest contract which was a huge student accommodation and part of a hospital in um cornwall in falmouth and um we we're just about to start and then boris johnson announced the country's going into lockdown lockdown the next mm -hmm. day and we was like you couldn't write this we was like oh my god uh and then we got a letter to say look the, the contract's been given key worker status um if you'd like to carry on you can so mm -hmm. we we spoke to the team we just moved into this new factory that we'd got and weirdly we just fitted a shower cubicle which is a pivotal part of the story because then a few of our guys in our team about 10 of them said why don't we just sleep here what was that hey because none of us knew what this bug was out there. It's yeah, COVID. Yeah. You go outside yeah. your front door, you catch it. And we come up with this plan. A few of us are ex-army. And we come up with this plan of saying, right, OK, well, what if we stay here Monday to Friday? We go home at the weekend. We reduce the risk of taking COVID for our front door every day of the week. We go home. We do our family shop on a Friday to take the food back home. And we pick up some extra food during that period, each of us, and bring it back to work on a Monday. 
and we fitted out sleeping quarters, cleaning facilities, and everybody still worked their normal shift. And at the end of the shift, we set up a cinema room and things like that. And we was here for probably about eight or nine weeks, nearly, nearly wow. like just over two months. Wow. Um, and the BBC got wind of it and the news got wind of it and they gave us a camera to bring in and we got on the news. And that was the high point of COVID that we were surviving. We was getting through it. We we're still managing to keep yeah. everybody open. We didn't, we, it was probably only one or two office staff we had to put on furlough. We didn't have to depend on any loans. We were very fortunate. But looking around on the industrial estate that we're on, there were businesses that were closing. There were businesses yeah. that couldn't survive. So we felt yeah. very fortunate, but we we had to be the sort of survivor uh, force our own success um so we pushed through there and then obviously the downfall of the business when we, we mm. got took by that other company was the low point um mm. especially from a mental health point of view yeah. i'd never sort not sort of believed in mental health but i'd sort of gone look everybody's their own personal person being from a military background you sort of bury that and get on with things yeah. and that was yeah. a harsh lesson to learn as a business owner um i worked very closely with a company called talking therapies i'm very open about it and it helped me for a very a difficult period of understanding as a business owner there's, there's sort of not always anybody above you to ask how do I get through this how do I how do I manage this situation and you've got to, you've got to ask for help and I didn't at that time uh, but now I'm in a great position after that then we move into relaunching the business and and how that's grown naturally and moved into a, a four-day week working pattern for and we pay the guys for five days still so they've got that better home life work balance and and that's a success yeah. of the positive side that we came out of yeah. so covid was a real yeah, weird time I mean, it it seems that you know i mean what business owners would experience in a couple of years it feels as if yes. you've experienced <laughs> in that short period of yeah. span of time yeah great great that but you know simon which brings me to my next question and behind looking at behind you series of awards and recognitions you know what you just shared the ups and downs the roller coaster ride you had what do you think would be the if you have to nail down to let's say one thing uh, that you attribute your growth to what would that be um i think it's i probably say three things it's hard to put it down to one I okay think one... let's go for three I think one is to be able to adapt and overcome. There's constant challenges all the time, as, as we've just heard, and whether that be a material that's not available, whether that's somebody that the staff member that turns ill and can't come in, whether or not sometimes you've got a power cut and the factory power doesn't work for three days, you've got to adapt and overcome. Um, if you just stand by and watch it and wait wait for everything to get fixed, you'll very very close your door, very quickly close your doors. So I think that's probably my first one. The second one is, is is definitely it's just the basic it's hard work it, mm -hmm. if you're not prepared to put that hard work and sacrifice and and work harder than anybody else that you know um it's just not going to pay off it, mm -hmm. it, at certain periods of time through the business you can cruise along uh, and the business sort of works itself but the, mm -hmm. if you get complacent and you're not prepared to constantly put that hard work in you can start slipping down a slippery slope um yeah. so yeah i'd say hard work and the last thing is work ethics it's mm. you've got to, everybody in your team not just you everybody's got to have the same mindset of work ethics and if that means looking at a job that you're building and going it's nearly half past four it's nearly the end of the day i know i'm not finished having that work ethic to go if i put an extra hour in here i can get it finished today and the customer's going to be happy and it's now going to potentially be more, more work for us if you have that mindset of going, well, it's not my job, I'm going, it's half past four, and then someone else can finish it, that's not being a great part of our team. Do you know what I mean? And I think if you haven't got that, then that's it. So I'd probably say they're the three attributes for me as to why we're still here today. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I think one I can one I can add to it by listening by speaking to you is uh, definitely resilience. And I think that could be probably your background and armying, you know, you definitely seem to have that resilient mindset. Although you you said it that you were not in the right mindset at one point of time, mm. but you asked for it. All of us are, I mean, we always go through up and downs. Mm. But you know And um, I think that also I think we touched on base before we started this. Um that resilience and that being able to adapt and overcome 
isn't just with me and my team. There's there's people behind that. There's people's partners at homes. We have families. My partner Claire, who we spoke about before. We wouldn't even have this business without having the support that your partners give you at home. Do you know what I mean? You when you come home, you've had an horrendous time. You don't want to carry that baggage through the front door. But having that person that will break it down with you, will have another thought process with you and go, right, OK, well, what about this? Or, yeah, you're right. Well, maybe you might be wrong. Mm-hmm. Having that person to bounce off at home that you can't sort of do that in the office is mm-hmm. is priceless. It's priceless. Mm-hmm. And without Claire, the business body would be where we are today. Yeah, I'm sure Claire would be definitely very uh, proud of that. <laughs> <Yeah. I mean. laughs> yeah. I think she would but, like to treat and I'll, I'll sit home with the children and she'll, yeah. she'll do this. I think she'll happily treat. Yeah. yeah, no, I think uh, she she's definitely proud of you and there's a lot of hard work that goes definitely there. <laughs> so, Simon, um, if you look back, when I speak to business owners and we see what business challenges they face, you know, the all the challenges fall in either of the three places. It it is time probably, getting more time back, working fewer hours. It's uh, money, the growth part of the business, or team. You know, what do you think is the challenge, or what do you foresee the challenge for yourself and the business? Um, I think it's two chapters really. Before it used to be. You've set the business up, let's make the most money we can and don't be a millionaire one day. You very quickly realised when the business went that the value of money was totally different. Uh, we was back then, it was the first business that I'd had. The business had grown very quick, um, yeah, by hard work. But the numbers became sort of like monopoly. It wasn't real. Um, it wasn't your money, uh, it was the business money. And you very quickly realised that you, you're probably not going to be a millionaire overnight. Um, so when that business went, and and now we're in a different position, you're sort of watching everything. So money has a totally different value now. Um, so I'd probably say the challenges for a business now is the big one. It's the big C, it's the cash flow. Cash flow at the moment is so difficult for every business, no matter how profitable your company is. Mm-hmm. The fixed costs in business now, your, your electricity, your overheads, the things you can't change, you have very limited power on changing, have just mm-hmm. gone disproportionate they've, they've gone crazy absolutely through the roof and you can't just offload that onto your customer yeah you know i mean it's because then you have no business um so you've got to trickle feed that into your into your mm-hmm. into your customer to try and increase your profit margin so mm-hmm. the difficulty is when these are growing so fast and you can only trickle this in your cash mm-hmm. flow is suffering in the middle um, yeah yeah that that is exactly where everybody i feel everybody is in the minute so i think the biggest challenge is is the world that's affecting our cash flow um yeah. and the support from the government in regards to wages are flying up um yeah. everybody's people need money and i understand that uh, um you, you look at it slightly differently i think now as a business owner when i was working with somebody before i was constantly looking for a pay rise as a business owner you're sort of trying to keep that door shut a little bit yeah. um but the, the 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 fast growth of wages over the past five years is is surreal. Um, it's needed, but I think the problem is if the profits and the and the cash flow and the business isn't growing, but demands of minimum wage are going so high, um, yeah. they're not keeping up with each exactly. other. So exactly. That, and that's probably why you've got one so many businesses closing two so many startups because people are going you know what actually i want more money my, my boss isn't going to give it to me i'm going to go and do this for myself yeah uh, which is great a lot more people get more independent but the problem is they very quickly realize it's not that easy and they're nosediving yeah. exactly. um, so this is the issue and, and it's a massive issue i think the core of that is always going to come back to the cash flow it's, yeah. it's always the big one yeah, I, I, I mean, you've touched a very good point I, when I speak to business owners because numbers is my strength and I love, um, uh, because of my background, I love playing um, with numbers and cash flow, spe- especially for bigger companies, you know, uh, manufacturing, it's it's massive. And then it's like, how do you employ the right oper- you know, right tools and how do you measure it? Because you can only spend that much cash what's coming in yeah yeah of course you can yeah and i think it's tricky beyond that it's very tricky because you can look at it and i think we're we're fortunately as your businesses grow you get opportunities and you see opportunities to say you know what actually um i'm paying so much money out on transport 
I might as well start a little transport business. So we've got a lot of spin-off companies from our company that we own. And one of the businesses that we're looking at now is basically an industry that there is no stock, there is no inventory. So you don't have to manufacture anything. So your your risk is, is very low. Um, so we're looking at um, it's, it's more into the estate agent, letting agency pro- property market. Obviously, with the background outside of the business, we uh, fortunately me and my partner have brought a lot of properties and rented them out. So it's a natural progression that we're trying to move into. But you look at that interest, you, you sort of look at it and dream and think, oh, I can't wait not to have to buy so much stock and uh, manufacture everything and the risk of there being a slight mark on something and the customer not being happy. and. To, to have that headache taken away in this climate is huge. Do you know what I mean? Because the profit margins now have come so tight that it's very hard for any manufacturer to stay profitable um, as, as they used to be. Um, so you, everybody's feeling the picture. Mm, no, definitely. I, I can relate to this is what I heard from everyone. And uh, I think, but yeah, let's have this discussion uh, so we can go into the detail part of it. So uh, moving on, Simon. If you have to start the business from the scratch, I think you mentioned about one point, but what would you do? What would you do differently this time? Um, what would I do differently? Um, I think if I had to sort of start again, um, I would invest a lot more into, like I say, wanting to people um, mm-hmm. in, in regards to not looking for the cheapest wage that and think, oh, it's yeah. okay, I can train them. Um, probably invest in people's expertise very early doors and invest into soft, forward-thinking software and technology. The, the, whether we like it or not, technology runs the world. And obviously there's obviously people behind that, but in old trades and industries like joinery and brickwork and, and things like that, things that people say are the d- trades that yeah. we lose that we're dying off. Um, they're dying off if you don't adapt and overcome and if you don't forward think. So I think if I had to do this again, I'd invest a lot more into my accountancy software from the day one. So into things like Sage from day one, not trying to think I could do it myself. Um, I'm glad you said that. Because um, that is one thing that trips probably most business owners up, unless they come from that background, um, mm. is, the, is the numbers. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And very quickly understanding corporation tax and VAT and PYE and how to pay yourself properly and things like that. If you've got nobody guiding you through that, it's a very tricky period. And I think most business owners that haven't had someone guiding them through that, it's their first hurdle they trip over. Um, and you very quickly realise the tax man waits for nobody. Do you know what I mean? And you have to pay them. Um, so yeah, I'd invest a lot into my Sage software, probably very early doors. And industry specific software and technology in regards to we have a lot of software that helps us design things and helps us do the, the drawings and the cutting sheets for the factory machinery that can do probably four or five men's job very accurately that allows you to have less staff do you know what i mean to start off with and be more accurate and more efficient um so i think definitely software technology and skilled staff would be my start straight away yeah, I mean, you you have actually nailed all the points which is needed to grow a business that can work without you because that's where the leverage comes in. Yeah. To grow a business because mm-hmm. business is an intangible asset. To grow a business, we need to grow a team who in turn makes happy customer and a happy customer results to happy business and a happy business owner. It, do, it does. And I think the, the job that you guys do, the job that people like the Federation of Small Businesses and people like that, it's invaluable because if you guys don't spread the word about things like this and give people the information that are looking to take that first step and and potentially make avoid all the mistakes that a lot of us have made, that gives them a lot more chance of succeeding. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And if they if they don't heed this advice, um, then yeah, best of luck because it yes. is it's invaluable. Yeah. It, it it definitely is. So you said people, people definitely, you've been talking about it since the start, yeah. is massive uh, for you. I can, I can really see that. But now when you look at hiring employees, what sort of qualities do you look at and how do you create that work environment? I mean, you have spoken about COVID. I, when you were talking, I was like, that is fun. You know, that yeah. is the sort of fun. It was. I think you've got to, there's a fine line between friendship and an employee. 
um, mm -hmm. and employees do become friends. Um, mm -hmm. But you very quickly realise if you do something wrong with a pay packet, that friendship's not so much there. Yeah. So it, there is, I think there's employee friends and then there's friends. So you, there's a fine line. I think if if I was hiring people again uh, and I had to do it all over again to hire people, yeah, I'd do it a, a lot differently. Um, every, one thing I've learned hugely with employee staff is, wow, everybody's different. And everybody's so different. Yes, they've all come here to do the same job. Uh, so you've got your team of joiners, your team of designers, but everybody's going to work differently. And that's something that's really hard to get your head around to start off with. Everyone's personality is different. You've got people that have just left university. You've got people that are 30 years experience of children, of grandchildren, and their responsibilities out of work, responsibilities out of work, that you've got to understand they've got responsibilities out of work to how they can work. Do you know what I mean? And mm. you, you see a lot of TV shows that have very like no um no emotion in business you've got to be brutal you can't work like that in a skilled industry so maybe no disrespect to industries that are unskilled so pick, picking and packing and things like this there is a lot of numbers of people that are uh, unskilled that you can go right okay you're not doing your job you leave i'll bring someone else in tomorrow no. yeah. in skilled industries you can't do that so you've got to That's really stupid. work yeah you've got to really understand your employee and understand their needs and work with them. so i think understand that everyone's different there's a fine line between friendship and, uh, and employees and massively employing as soon as you can when you realize that you're a little bit stretched right okay i need a manager in that level to take that responsibility to manage that team okay we've grown a bit more there's now a machine shop there's now a workshop i now need a factory manager to oversee these guys yeah. because managers give you growth Without managers, you can't grow. Without managers, you can't have free time. You can't have time to, one, have more personal time, which is the the reward of running your own business. Um, but also, you can't look to expand into new ventures. Without managers to run your business, I, very learned, I learned very quickly that just having a holiday, when you've got a manager that you trust and you know they've got the skill set and their team below them, can manage your business you you can take a step away and go on holiday without doing what i used to do and set up a little office in the corner of your hotel room yeah. and your your partner's by the pool with the kids while you're running back to the room to do a quotation <laughs> it does still happen now and again don't get me wrong but with managers that is reduced yeah you know i mean Absolutely. And, i can i can totally relate to it and understand and i think I it it's been I can feel that it's been a journey for you full of learnings and a beautiful journey full of experiences. As so, we still are. Yeah, as we yeah still exactly. Are. And it will always be there because yeah. there are I mean, when you were talking about the software, I, I think the biggest thing which is coming is AI, you know, how it will change the entire yeah. industry and the pattern. So, you know, just being adapted and taking the first mover advantage, whereas, you know, the competitors still want figuring out what is it but you adapt as a company to the new software and you enjoy that period yeah, of course so yeah, that definitely. that's that's massive but simon look looking at the business now where you are currently the three room design what is the vision what's the vision what's the big new thing well, the three design has just hit a period of stability now so we've gone from being relaunching um, having our growth and getting back to where we was, but getting back to that level efficiently. So we're now at that level with when we closed, we had 40, just under 42, yeah, 42 or 41 staff. Mm -hmm. And um, we we was had big projections on our turnover, but we was killing ourselves. We was working all the hours God gave us and it wasn't a healthy way to work. Although it was making profits and then from the outside looking in, the business was doing fantastic. It wasn't a healthy business in regards to its core and how we worked, our processes. Mm. Looking forward with Three Rooms Design, we, we, when we relaunched it, we was like, right, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this in a way that we've learned from our lessons. Um, so we relaunched on a four day week working system. Uh, we, right. I sort of learned that a little bit. I used to work for a company called Royal Fredbergs in, in Sweden, and they had this ethos and it worked really, really well when, when mm -hmm. I was there. Naturally, you just think of a day off, but just the morale of your staff coming to work on a Monday, knowing that you've got a long weekend coming ahead. You know, yes. you've got a three day week all the time, three day weekend. And when we started it, we sort of said, right, there's no point in saying, right, we're going to work four days but cram the, all 40 hours into that four days is pointless. You, you're just undoing all the good work that you're about to do. So we sort of said to the staff, 
if you could work one hour extra a day, but it's your choice how you work that hour. So you could come in half an hour early, stay half an hour late, the yeah. flexibility of that. Um, so we, we put that into it and then Fridays became everybody's day off, but you still got paid. Um, and if we ever needed overtime as this industry, we get busy. Friday mornings became the new Saturday mornings. And because of that, most people's partners and family were at school or at work. So it became very accessible to do overtime. So people had accessible access to more income. We had accessible access to more people to do overtime. And people don't look at that side of it. So and we also, if we did overtime on a Friday, we could see what we've achieved with that time what we've yeah. done on that one day rather than hours spread through the week yeah so that that worked really well for us so we introduced that when we started we gave it six months and um wow yeah it was a success we had to make a few tweaks along the way um but yeah, yeah. it was a, it was an underlying massive success so that was something we put in so we've now hit that point now with that working so well we've got very efficient staff we've invested into our technology and well, now we have, I think we've got 18 staff now, um, just took a 19th on today. So we are 19 staff and we are now doing the same turnover that we did just before we went uh, under as a business with 19. With 42 staff. Yeah, so you? we're doing the same turnover we were doing with the 42 staff with 19 staff <laughs> working one day less a week. Wow. Just by being more efficient and managing ourselves mm -hmm. a lot better. Um, and you, as a business owner, yes, you've got to accept, you've probably got to sacrifice a bit of that profit margin by giving, paying the people for five days. But what you get in return is is tenfold. Do you know what I mean? You're getting efficient staff, loyal staff, people that hiring staff is better because people want to work for a company that's doing the system. So that works. So moving forward from that, we've now stabilised. We're in a position of, of stability now. Um, I think the, the key thing is to, we've got a small set of growth, but to be honest with you, I think we're in a position where, sometimes growth doesn't need to carry on you can have a nice stabilized business and you're happy at a stage because we've done the huge prop huge projects where we've had million million pound projects by the time you sort of paid everybody you've got to the end of it the profit margins aren't as much different to what I it was, was about, doing yeah i was about to say that i mean it's not always the growth and turnover at mm. the end what comes in your pocket is profit and it cash. Is. And for me now, we look at this and, as a business and go, yes, cash is king all the time. Do you know what I mean? You've got to pay your bills. But it's hard for me to, to sort of say this because I never sort of believed this back in the day. But but looking at this now, our profit is sort of, without sounding cheesy, is, is family and happiness. Because what do you go to work for? You go work. So you can go home, you've got money in your pocket to pay your bills, to be able to spend time with your family. And that's right from the top to the bottom of this business. Everybody's in there for the same reason. And I think that now is the underlying growth of our business. Do you know what I mean, as long as everybody's happy and we've got loyal staff that want to work here and are happy in their own personal lives, and as a business owner, that I've got the time I want to spend with my family as well as enjoying my work, that's our profit margin. Do you know what I mean? And that's where we need to be. Um, and I think yeah. that's a, as long as that stabilizes, then we'll carry on. That is so good. I think, uh, you know, I often talk to business owners and we say revenue is vanity, profit is sanity and cash is king. Yeah. 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 I see that. And uh, that that fits so beautifully with your ethos and the vision you have. But at the end of the day, uh, it's about what you want. Mm. And people want different things in life but for you what does success mean to you and I'm, I'm so glad what you said uh, you know in terms of the family and happiness and having that stability uh, uh, you know in the sense of what you've just turned and this is mind this is mind-blowing same turnover with 19 star what you had with 41 40 41 star so that clearly defines that you know when we have focus we focusing on something the results happen i think it's as well as as because people say well how are you getting the same amount of work done and we, we have had some customers that have gone we don't think it's going to work um is that going to affect our workload and also we have to try and reassure them but it's usually your time effectively that you've got and, it, and it's having managing in place managers in place and obviously managing yourself that you know you're coming in you've now got yeah. 30 to 36 hours to work with <laughs> 
So it's managing that time really efficiently and effectively um, rather than going, it's okay, we've got five days. Do you know what I mean? So it's worked elsewhere. Why can't it work for us? And we've made it work. Yeah, you remind me of something, you know, if you have a flight to catch on a Friday evening when we're going for a holiday, how efficient is that Friday? Because we know that we have a flight to catch. How many things we're able to do that yeah. on that one day? And it's surreal because if somebody says to you, right, okay, you got to, we've got, we've won a ticket to go to so-and-so. We've got to go in two hours, get home, pack the stuff for the kids. So you've got to go. You'll pack, it you'll get is. there. Yeah, if someone says to you, you've got till the end of the week, you'll still do that mad rush on Friday. And it's yeah. just the same, it's the same principle. Exactly. But no, it's, I think with with our business, and one thing now that we, we we sort of look forward to now, and as a business owner, is to know, sort of how to put this, is to know when, don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to say, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with my business now, but I'm looking for a new challenge. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's, some people feel sort of i could imagine and i felt like this before my old business you do sort of feel sometimes trapped because as a yeah. business owner you've you've built a life for yourself outside so you've now got a nice house and a nice car you live in a nice area and there's a lot of responsibility to pressure to keep that up i, th- I won't say just responsibility it's pressure to keep that that up mm-hmm. to give your children the life sort of you you didn't have and, uh, and and that and that comes with a lot of pressure but you're you, you do sometimes feel that you're in a position you go god if this don't perform, I can't do this again. Do you know what? It's all just money and it is all can easily be found again. If this isn't what you want, do you know what I mean? Start again. Do you know what I mean? If this isn't, yeah. if it's not working on the path you wanted it to, move it to one side, start a new path. Do you know what I mean? Don't be afraid to fail. Do you know what I mean? That's yeah. the only advice I'd give to anybody. Do you know what I mean? Because when it's time and you go, you know what? I haven't got the passion for this anymore. Okay, well, what have you got a passion for? Businesses can be sold. Business, if you build something that's good and profitable and works, do you know what I mean? You're not going to upset anybody if, if it gets sold and they carry your success on and grow with that business. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, people sometimes are so scared of looking for a way out. Do you know what I mean? And whether that way out might be putting a manager in place of this missus, an operations director, and then spending some more time on another business. Well, you've worked damn hard to be able to put an operations director in place to carry on your success so you can go and spend some time doing something else. Yeah. Don't be afraid to grow in other other ways. Don't think all the pressure is just on you to succeed in one yeah. business. Yeah, I think for a business owner, the key is to learn how to let go, let go yes. of that line. Yeah, and you, you rightly mentioned trust. And trust is something which I personally believe, believe. first you give trust and you get, in return, you get trust. So yeah. give to God trust. See, but... it's, it is difficult. I mean, I, I've had it both ways. I mean, I've got people here, not only I can trust with the business, I can trust with my family. And yeah, they, they, you, you cut them in half and they bleed three rooms. You know? I mean, and I'm very, very lucky to have some stuff like that. I've got people I thought I had like that um, and I would trust. And then you very quickly realise it's a job. And when they leave and they move to a competitors or anything like that, you think, wow, I really trusted that person with as my right hand man in the business. So you have a famous saying that people say trust nobody in business. Do you know what I mean? Because business is business. You've got to trust somebody. You've got to trust somebody. Do you know what I mean? And you, you, that calculated risk that you take has got to be calculated very Absolutely. well. Absolutely. 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 Yeah, I, I wouldn't say do not trust anyone because uh, otherwise it, it's sort of... Pointless. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like, okay, you're just in that zone where you're not trusting and you're just doubting and it's a very negative uh, place to be. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Simon, it has been a great uh, journey you know, being a part of your journey, actually, to see the ups and downs and where you are and where you're growing into. Uh, I think it was a great uh, speaking to you. At the end, my one thing would be dream big and uh, take small steps. So do not let go of your big dreams because uh, if you want it, you get it. Whatever you want in life, you get it. No one's got all the answers. That's the key thing. We're all learning as we go along. Exactly. So uh, thank you, Simon. Thank you for joining us today. My pleasure.